Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of Artist Wife and Writer Husband starring the artist Anna Richardson and the writer Anderson Richardson. No relation. <laughs> I thought you was going to do it. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Anyways, um, yeah, we're starting this podcast because we want to help other creators like us, you know, help set up a platform that just kind of show that, you know, we all got to start from somewhere. You know, you have your Jim Lees, you have your Quentin Tarantino's, and, you know, you have your, uh, give, give me someone else, Stephen King's, yeah? Right. And a lot of people look at, like, their most recent work, and then they're like, oh, well, how can I ever be like this? Like, they don't look at how they were in the beginning. It's always what they're doing now and it's like you know you can see what we're doing now right you see what they become and the disconnect comes from how can i find the door you know and a lot of people they may have the tools to 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 locate or to like start searching for what i say is their door but a lot of people don't know how to push the door open and i can say that as a creator myself as creators ourselves as POC creators, we too struggle with how to open the doors because life is constant, you know, is, is I've, I've discovered life is a constant uh, navigating through doors, decisions that you have to make. How is this going to affect my work? How is this project going to continue to, to influence what I want to, to show to the world? And one very important thing is that people... You know, they're, they're like, there are days when I want to give up. There are days when you want to give up. There are days where giving up seems like the thing that we have to do. And we wanted to create this platform to say you don't have to give up and to talk about how we get over those feelings and right. what keeps us going. I believe it was Ralph that said, there is many <laughs> doors, Ed boy. <laughs> <laughs> and with us on this podcast, we want to bring other creatives and other um just other creativepreneurs who are in a like-minded state as us, in a like-minded place as us, where... Wait, what was that term you just said? Creativepreneur. What does that mean? Creativepreneur is a term that I learned from my mentor. I can, I, can I name drop? Did she pay us first? All right. My mentor. <laughs> <laughs> who um, basically gave me the, gave us this word to you, call You ourselves. can drop her name. I was, I'm joking. Oh, I, <laughs> I was like, maybe like, we should... Is she a sponsor? Should I ask? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Imani Brown. And uh, she gave us this, this word that like perfectly describes what I feel like I am, a creative entrepreneur, what I feel like we are. Because being a businesswoman and being a creative, they seem conflicting, you know? It's like being a creative and being logical, being able to balance the numbers, but also like allow myself to go on these whimsical fantasies to bring them to life through whatever way I can. And combining the two is a challenge. And I'm learning. And I hope that for those of you out there, maybe what I've learned, will, what we've learned will rub off on you, you know, through listening to us. And we'll bring on other uh, creators, other creativepreneurs um, to talk their point of views as well. Today on our first podcast, we have joining us uh, Jamal Todd, also known as MDC. Artist MDC. Artist MDC, yes. Now, uh, before we before we bring him on, I just want to mention to y'all that, you know, he's a close friend. And, you know, we've been working with him. We've been in a couple of his films. Uh, recently, uh, you know, he's going to get into it. He's going to tell y'all about this one film that he uh, just finished called Remember the 31st. Me and Anna had very, very short parts in it. Hey, I was but, cool. But, I mean, it was cool to be in the captions because, you know, this is literally how I live. We're just by doing these uh, films. Yes. And the last film he did, it was like five years ago. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, it hasn't been a good part for my acting career. But, you know, I got writing. <laughs> I got writing. I'm like, you know, I got to make the scripts. I got I got to get the scripts going, you know, go to Hollywood, sell them. I, I guess that's what you do, join a writers guild. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So to bring in MDC, artist MDC. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, t tell us tell us a little a bit. <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Like, uh, well, we what's your what's your main inspiration? What? 
We're, oh yeah, we haven't he's even a guy. About ourselves. Oh, but us? Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> I Midnight, want to. What's, Mitty, what's your inspiration? <laughs> so I'm sorry, bear with us, people. This is the first episode. Yeah, we're gonna get this. My episode two. What episode two are we doing? Episode two. Um, it depends if the people want it. If oh, they're right. like, you know, stop. I thought we were just going to keep going. Well, yeah, if you get more than like, like two people listening, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, oh, I thought we were just keep going. Mom, dad, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really banking on y'all. Hey, yo. As a creator, I focus on uh, sequential art and comic books as well as concept art, and especially black girl magic and Afro Latina uh, diversity. Like, empowerment is the way that I want to. Uh, how I want to uh, present my art to the world. I use what I draw to uh, create more diversity in a field that's very uh, one color, you know. And it's getting out there. We're getting more. We're seeing more. But I want to put more indie work out there. And I'm the artist and my husband, Andy Rich. Oh, is that what you said earlier? No, Neff. I didn't. Nope, uh, didn't. Yeah. So my, my uh, pseudonym is Neff. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a writer, a comic book writer for now. Yeah, we'll we'll say that. Yeah, possible novelist. I don't know. Uh, was ever in the works? You know, battling for rejection. Yeah, <laughs> hi, that's me. Uh, welcome to my TED talk. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. And artist in DC. I wasn't done. You're so not. My inspiration <laughs> comes from. It comes from a, a lot of things like I mean just just I was into a lot of different things still kind of am you know I like to lean more so with the like more dark side stuff though I do like Sonic but like I guess dark side stuff like Spawn I kind of want to create a dark side Sonic comic. when you say dark side I keep thinking of like the um the the is that DC is DC right dark side Oh the yeah, villain. yeah. The, I think you mean dark like side the villain. grittier, or you mean like dark fantasy, or more like yeah, gritty, right? Yeah, yeah. Like gritty, like that. Yeah. Yeah, like um, like you said, Spawn and. Uh, yeah, and then I just like really love stuff like mythology, and stuff like that. Uh, one of the s- companies, me and my friends had started before. Um, well, during high school was Heaven and Hell Studios. Yay. Then it became Heaven and Hell Comics. Yay. We released one comic and uh, life got in the way and yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. stopped right there. But I mean, hey, I printed a comic that was pretty nice. Definitely working towards other things. And then we printed another comic. Well, half another con- comic. Conventions. Yeah. That really didn't make sense. But we're, yeah, we're definitely working on a comic, <laughs> yeah. more work and stuff like that. I mean, you know, if you don't already follow my wife's Instagram, you know, we'll we'll do the information and whatnot at the end. Yeah, definitely. You know, we'll links in the throw all that later. Comments. I mean, we have so. Yeah, I was thinking about putting this on YouTube. Oh, okay. No, oh. oh, sorry. Links in the description. Description below. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. So bad. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So, Artist MC, MDC, I wanted to ask, you know, for you to come in here and talk, mm-hmm. um, your inspirations, what you do, and how you create, or what you do to create. Wow. Boy, is that a complex uh, question, because, wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm being put on the spot right now. That's a very complex thing, but I guess you could say, really... Well, you mentioned your film. Yeah. So, okay, well, we'll start off with film inspirations. I mean, ironically, a lot of my film ideas don't come from other films. It just comes from things I just sort of pick up on on the way. Sometimes I'll take something very mundane and just pull that as inspiration just to span on that. You know, it could be the darnest thing, like hearing the noise in the dark of an alley. And I'm like, huh. You know, what if that was, you know, something bigger? And I just expand on that. They just, it's hard to really, it's really hard to say where my ideas come from because they really do come from many places. But, you know, b- before film, I guess you could say I'm an artist first and 
probably my most significant inspiration art-wise would be H.R. Geiger. No, I don't know him personally. That is an inside joke. Just letting y'all know this now because it will come back up, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also African art. And um, I tend to combine those two elements, but I'm also very inspired by classical artwork. But of course, you know, I also grew up reading comic books, particularly Image, you know, Spawn and The Darkness mm -hmm. and Witchblade. Uh, I, you know, I'm a 90s, a black 90s kid, grew up with Toonami, so Dragon Ball Z was inspiration. So all these ideas just kind of came together and just, you know, I'm also a very political person. I also love history. I'm also a philosophical person. These are things that just I combine in my stories to try to make something, you know, a tad bit original. Uh, I find that um, very important for, like, us as uh, creatives to pull from as many things as possible. Like, if you look at things in the... Like, if you look at as creativity has a well that needs to be, like, filled up. Like, your creativity is a well that needs to be filled up. You have to, like, well, I'm not going to say you have to, but it really helps for you to go out and experience things. Go to museums, you know, watch different things. Like, okay, let's say you're into anime. You want to create an anime. Look at different things, like, other than anime that you can introduce to your project to help make it more seem more creative and to seem more like you because a lot of the times when you create something and you you can create it uh, entirely inspired off of not always but you can create something entirely inspired off of someone else's thing that you've seen or that you've read or that you've witnessed in one some way and if there are a lot of times when you're creating this but you didn't put yourself into this it doesn't have your essence um, is how, you know, this, this is the way I feel about it. Sometimes there are things that don't fully have my essence or like something that's a part of it that's that's me. And halfway through the project, I've lost complete interest in it, you know, because it didn't have my full, like, I wasn't in the work. And that's not a bad thing, but you start to begin to understand a bit more of what inspires you and how to put that inspiration. And, like, how would you say, like, you're, like, channeling the inspiration through you Versus yeah. just taking it and bouncing it off of you? Sometimes I feel like you might have, like, a really good idea, but you got to let it sit. Yeah. Like, sometimes people try to harvest an idea or they try to make it grow quicker and whatnot, right. and it kind of lose that uh, that that uh, creativity, that, you know, it being different mm -hmm. and whatnot. And, and one thing I want to explain on what I often do when I get an idea of which I feel like, is original. I actually research it. You know, we're in a generation 100%. where we have it really easy, where we could just look on the internet for really anything. So I think, huh, this is a cool idea. I wonder if it has been done. And if it has, you don't just give up on it. You just think, well, how could I do it differently? Because as they say, no idea is an original idea. So there's so many things that have been done a hundred times. Like you say, okay, take the story of Jesus. It's been turned into Superman. It's been turned into E.T. It's been turned into Robocop. You He's know, a freaking lion at one point. Was, yeah, he, <laughs> you know, you have a lion. You know, a Jesus lion. You know, these. <laughs> you can literally take the one idea and turn it into. 50 different things. I mean, the Catholics did, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, oh, it, you know. that kind of podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> There's but, religious connotations. Yes. But, you know, no, but, you know, and if you take a lot of things, like, you take even a lot of animes are inspired by other works of fiction and even history. You take, um... You know, video games, our video games that we have now are literally inspired by movies and even now more so... Uh, uh, literature. Heck, Halo is a very biblical video game. Halo you know? actually has a very like expansive like series. There's a bunch of Halo books in the sci-fi section. I did yeah. not know that it was like that much. Right. Yeah. You, you know, know so and, it's like and it's so you know you know there's a lot of things we've are accustomed to as fans that took inspiration from various different things and and that's and that's why I think we made like a lot of. Very original ideas, because people not only, especially back in the day, not only, you know, they 
they were probably born in a religious household, so they had that. They grew up, had quite a bit of life experience. Then they they were you know they were fans themselves of different things. They you know probably read a lot. They probably grew up on early comic books. They went to the movies. They listened to music. You know, so nothing is inspired by one thing. Right. You know, it just you live takes... your life with these things around you. In fact, I can give uh, I can actually. Do you mind if I headway into the first topic? Because pretty much where we're going is where I wanted to, to bring up about inspirations. And specifically because Jamal brought up one of them, uh, video games. Right. Uh, and, and just to, uh, before we get into that, yeah. and just to agree with you, like, no man, no one man is an island into himself. Right. Like, everyone is inspired from something else. Like, everything. Everything is an inspiration from something else. Okay. Uh, and Yes. We are about to touch on video games. One video game in particular. Yes, there's a lot of video games, but I can say that one of my main inspirations, uh, a video game that touched my soul as a kid and like continues to this day to help me create and inspire, especially with their create a soul uh, creation section, Soul Calibur, Soul Edge. I played Soul Edge on the Dreamcast years ago. Um, on my senseis uh, during middle school, Dreamcast. He brought it because we were we were in karate, we were in taekwondo, and oh, he was like, like... I thought you was being cheeky when you said sensei. No, it was like, actually my sensei, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sensei Goldheart, I think is. I don't think that was his real name. <laughs> wow. I think that's just what he wanted to be called. I think his that's name was just That's a pretty heart. dope name. I like, think it was just heart. only be one. <laughs> Children, I am Sensei Goldheart. <laughs> But he was really cool. I mean, he was a, I remember him because he was a very tall, very buff black guy. He had, was completely bald. He came to this Mexican school with a bunch of Hispanic kids and uh, in Texas. And he was like, hey, I want to start a Taekwondo program. Who wants to join? And I was like, me, 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 me. And it was literally just like five of us. I think originally there was like ten. But it got narrowed down to like five. And, um, yeah, I became a yellow belt. Yay. But I wasn't like... I was in the seventh and eighth grade, so, but that's funny. I quit at a yellow belt in taekwondo too. That's yeah, wild. yeah. <laughs> I had the chance to pursue it, but I think he was like not going to my other school, and I wanted him to go to my other school. I didn't want any other sensei, sensei Goldheart or just Hart. I'm pretty sure it was just Hart at this point. Okay. He was the coolest sensei. And at the end of the term, when the school was about to, because it was like a, like a good like eight month, mm -hmm. nine month long program, pretty long. He brought Soul Edge, and he brought. This Dreamcast, and I was like, "What is this? I haven't seen a Dreamcast before." We had a Sega, because Dreamcast was what older than that. Sega. Done. Well, it was a Sega I Genesis. Mean, Dreamcast is Sega. <gasps> well, Bing! mom had a Genesis, and he brought us. He right, Sega Dreamcast. He brought a Dreamcast, and I played Soul Edge for the first time. I loved it. I was Sung Mina. That was my first character, and then I became a. Uh, Kili, Shang Hua, Cervantes, those became like my mains at the time. And over the years, uh, I, my eyes were open to more fighting games. I was a Mortal, Com Mortal Kombat main. That was my thing. But when I got into Soul Calibur, I completely just, I didn't completely toss Mortal Kombat. I love Mortal Kombat. I loved Mortal, Com Mortal Kombat. But yeah, I was never a fan of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, he grew up on a, he grew up wrong. Yeah, my, it's a little violent though. My first console was the <laughs> Sega Genesis. And that wasn't my, my second, it, it came with a, a football game, but I had <laughs> no idea how to play because I was like in the first grade. But, um, and I had no older brothers to show me. That's literally like five, so yeah. And the second game they gave me was a uh, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2. Yeah, he has the Street Fighter. Yeah. Woo yeah. So I just grew up on Street Fighter. He's probably when a I, big in a coat fan, too. When I saw my, <laughs> <laughs> when I saw my cousins playing Mortal Kombat, I'm like, yo, these graphics. Suck. They did. Why are though. they so stiff? Like, what is, oh, what is so that punch? Ugly. What is that kick? See, oh, see, I loved it. Though. See, that, that's what happens when you ain't raised right. You know, you you don't learn to appreciate the artistry of what is the Mortal Kombat. You know, the funny thing is though that I feel like the I know more Street Fighter fans than I do Mortal Kombat fans as the years, especially as the years kept going and Street Fighter ripened with age and Mortal Kombat withered into like a fat rotting flute. And I'm just like Mortal Kombat, babe, no. But you know, in fairness, now I don't know Street Fighter too well, but all I know, Mortal Kombat took chances. So yeah. maybe that's what it is, you know. Oh. Yeah, I can tell you, I don't really play Street Fighter now. I'm definitely more Soul Calibur. Yes. Going back to this, I started Soul Calibur at uh, 
too. Like I, re- I remember I had the GameCube and the GameCube user released yes. these demo discs. And one of the demo discs had Soul Calibur 2. And I was like, you said yo, free. this game yeah. is so awesome. I can only play two characters at the time. It was just <laughs> Cassandra and Nightmare. But me and my brother, we just kept switching it up. I will play Nightmare. He'll play Cassandra. <laughs> I'll play Cassandra. He'll play Nightmare. Cassandra, Cassandra, Nightmare, Nightmare, whatever. And we were like, yeah, when this game comes out, we're going to get it. So we got it. And I found out about Talon. Yay. Yay. And that's like kind of how I beat the story mode. But after that, I totally loved the game. And when the game, because I don't think the the create. I think uh, that Creative Soul, Soul was, started the third game, I if think, I remember correctly. You know, it's been a while. I can say that, like, I played Soul Calibur, like, the first one in the arcade. Like, when you malls used to have, like, just what used to be, like, a restaurant, or what it probably is a restaurant now, malls actually had just, like, an arcade section. That's where I played the other Soul, Cal- Soul Calibur. You know, and the Soul Edge mm-hmm. was in there, too. But when I heard about Soul Calibur 2, I already had a GameCube, and I had a Zelda, the collection, and I was like, I need this Soul Calibur game. And that's when I, like, we bought the game. I think we got it with an allowance that our parents gave us. The games were, like, what, $25, $30 back then? They weren't, like, $40 or $50 until so much mm-hmm. later. Well, my Zelda game was, like, $40. Yeah. I, back then. If, you know, they never told me the price. They would just tell me that everything was expensive. So someone could cost a dollar, and they would tell me it was probably, like, 50 <laughs> bucks just so I didn't get it. So. Oh, that sucks. Parents are liars, man. My parents were like, you got to use your own money. And me and my siblings, I mean, there were seven of us. And so five of us pulled our money together. And we were like, so can we be? Oh, so I shouldn't do that. All I know, I think I think I came in on Soul Calibur like three. And, you know, I pretty much immediately stuck to Zazzlemel because he looks like me. And then I got to Valdo. amazing. Yeah, and it's like, those two characters, like, if I get those two characters, no one's beating me. I mean, oh, God, I, I'm I pretty Valdo. much identified those characters. It's like, you know, Zezlema on the streets, Valdo on the sheets. That's <laughs> literally <laughs> I like me. That. I like that. Oh, my God. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Soul Calibur, uh, Creator Soul did character creation, whatever you want to call it. It did start off with uh, two, with three. Yeah, oh, yeah, so okay, so three. Because yeah. yeah. there was so much, and to me, I still go back and say the third was, and the first was the best. There were so many, like, custom souls. They didn't even have, like, okay, so it started off with you could take the souls of the characters or you could take these pre-made souls that didn't belong to a character. And it was so many. Yeah, and you had, like, a uh, You had like Greaves. Yeah, you had the Greaves. Knight. The Greaves was the coolest. Yeah, I, want, just I actually want them to bring only. the Greaves back. Please bring the Greaves back. I that just want to do kick That attacks. was so dope. Just hat, but, hat, uh, hat. One of the reasons why we're Catch bringing shins. Soul Calibur Six up is because... We're disappointed. Pretty like, disappointed. Pretty freaking disappointed. As avid fans that like Soul Calibur, we use creation mode since three, four, five. Like we have four and five. We have three, don't we? Or do we have two? We have two. But we that's for the GameCube. Um, but we have four, five, and we use those to create our characters from our own OCs, our original characters from our stories. We've created so many. And then, and then back then they used to give us like five fifty slots. Five slots. They used to give us fifty slots, so it's like him and I and our friend would have to like, uh, as another artist would have to share um, their characters, and we, you know, we do our best. But it was like enough. It was so filling when they introduced patterns and stuff, where you can create like modern patterns. And then the fifth game introduced like modern clothes, like denim and jeans, and like so you're getting this fantasy. Uh, this very high fantasy game with like medieval stuff with weapons, but then they gave you the ability to like they just they their character creation at that time to me felt limitless. It was amazing, and then we waited five years, and then they told I think five six years, however long we waited for between the fifth and the sixth game, and so when the sixth came out, we were like yes. I heard on the interview that they're like putting their heart and souls into character creation mode. Like they specifically said on the E three interview, we can't talk about the character created the creator soul. But you guys know it's going to be hot fire. We got this for y'all. We know what y'all want. And then it came out, and we bought it. And I literally felt like like that burning, like, like anger and, like, and betrayal. And that's weird because it's like it's just a game. It's a company. And we found out their reasons. They had a budget. They couldn't put everything in it. So, also, but just still. so you understand, the thing that we have wrong with... Soul Calibur 6 
is the character creation and understand that yes, yes the game we're not game fun. designers and from what i understand they didn't have a big budget right and i can't That's blame like them for totally that totally understandable and then yes the races are weird are weird it's that they give you like i find it kind of limiting they give you like 12 and i don't really 10, see the real reason 16. behind it because it's like they give you character creation and then they give you creator soul or uh, what? It, what is that story mode called? Um, the the Libra of Chronicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chronicles of they Souls give you and the that. Libra. And the, sorry. And you would think that you can just take your created character and just bring them over to the story mode, but it's like no, you gotta, no, you gotta make, make this all character here. all over again. Also, that character stays here, and you can't transfer it back to any other part of the game. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> understand that. So it's kind of it pisses me off, but the thing that pissed me off the most is the lack. Of black hairstyles, like come on, in this game in 2018, like Japan. I know games, you know what a black person like looks like. Saints Row, <laughs> seeing games like Grand Theft Auto, seeing games like uh, NBA wrestling, 2K wrestling. I know that some of those companies are Japanese uh, developers. Yeah, that you're telling me, like all you have is crew cut. Uh, those really bad corn cut. rows. I won't even count crew cut. Buzz cut. That ridiculous bobo 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 bo Oh bobo bo 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 that dude that thing looks like it's like not and on them your hands. Ugly cornrows those with no hang time whatsoever and so much skin is showing between the braids. Like so someone cowboy. glued. What the elf? Like you guys had six years to be like, hey, maybe we should reference like they don't even give you wavy full hair. Like, like I mean, like if I you can't do like, the okay. kink and curls, all right. But can you at least give me like some volume? Some dreads, oh, maybe. Some, some yes, dreads. That's so easy. Like, do we play Monster Hunter? One of the chicks had like some type really of nice, nice half braids. Yeah, it just looks really dope. And yeah. It's like, I the wish that faces, was... the faces. There's no ethnic faces. There is and one. Whatnot. There's it's not the a same of... one from the last game. Everything they gave us was from the last game. I swear, Zalasmel is lighter. Yeah. Like no, they <laughs> totally lighten them up. <laughs> Maybe hitting the bleaching cream, and I'm Ooh, just Lord. like, it's it's really disappointing. <laughs> it it's is. really disappointing. It's like at the at the end of the day, like I really hope that they do take into the considerations of their fans. And yes, I understand that uh, has African Americans. We're a small percentage of players that probably actually play Soul Caliber and care about the Soul creation as much as us. Yeah, we're not. I know to we're attack. not the only ones. So if you anyone out there that's listening to this that feel <laughs> the same way, let us know. And, and but you know that's just the thing about representing people because you bring in new people. There's a lot of things that are dominated by said group, and they didn't think about adding other people until they did. And they realized, oh crap, we actually pulled in some new people because we actually gave them a, some a little bit of attention. Yeah. I mean, that's all it really takes half the time. It's like, you know, let me tell you something about when Black Panther came out. You know, and I'm not gonna get too much into that. That's a whole nother. Rant, I could go on about my awesome friends, topic, you know, all of a sudden having dashikis. But what I will tell he you, will not let us go yeah, y'all never. Technically, the shirt I had wasn't a dashiki; it was something else. Yeah, well, something. something hey, cute. I've yeah, always wanted to hit that store, it. but as an Afro Latina, I always felt like it wasn't my place. That's a, that's another subject, though. Yeah. That's so, so like I said, I'm not gonna get too much in, into that. But what I will say is I'm that, <laughs> you know. Like, you know, I'm, I'm in a family of literally about, like, four or maybe five gener living generations right now. My grandparents are both 88. And, you know, they don't care about superhero movies, really. You know, <laughs> they don't they don't care about that type of stuff. But when they said that we're going to go see this movie because we've never seen black characters like this in a movie like this, I knew that that meant something. A lot of people who didn't care about Marvel or whatever wanted to go see that movie. And, you know, I could I could speak on that, too. But what I will say is the very fact that you had a movie that had this fantasy or sci-fi element of Africa and featured this many black faces in this type of position clearly meant a lot. And, obviously, Hollywood made a lot of money off of it. And that's something that I feel like all these companies need to recognize. It's such a good example of, hey... Maybe if we add a bit more diversity, 
we can make more money from the other diverse people that live in this world versus yeah. just the specific targets of the whitey. <laughs> but, yeah, do realize, we know that maybe sometime soon, so Caliper is gonna drop the character, the hundred character creation pack. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but they have a list where they drop character A, which is gonna be Tira, but they didn't really drop her because she came when the game came out. There's character two B coming out from yeah, Nier Automata. I kind of felt like a certain way about that. I'm like, if, if you you're get gonna the have season downloadable pass. content as soon as the game comes out. Why didn't you just add Tira to the game before? Yeah, she like, was I like, mean, right yeah, with the I game. understand you guys didn't have a big budget. Y'all need to make money. But I'm like, I was downloading this expecting I would have got a little bit more uh, armor than uh, just Tira's set. Like, I don't know. It was kind of disappointing. Yeah. And it was very disappointing knowing that we basically, we went into character creation mode so excited, like, oh, what new stuff are they going to give us? Never before had Soul Calibur said, if you want more stuff, well, there was the store, and there was things you had to pay for, but you basically, that was like that extra added bonus stuff of, I've already unlocked all the stuff in the game, what more extra stuff can I get? Oh, I have to pay for it with some money? That's fine. I already have so much. This is just me wanting more stuff now. But they gave us this game with the basic create a soul armor stuff and 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 accessories yeah it and just it was, literally seems like just copy and paste yeah it's the same there's, stuff from the last game there's maybe like two or three different clothing stuff. accessories that was a problem when it was in soul caliber 5 that's still a problem yeah we like, still have a lot like, of clipping yeah, the clothes yeah. goes through the or it just doesn't seem to fit well yeah uh, yeah the, that, like it would hover like at least two three inches away from the character I'm not exaggerating. About like two inches away from the character. It looked crazy weird. It looked like it was like floating by the character's hip. And I was just, I didn't understand why this is a game from such a like, from Capcom. From such a like, like successful gaming company. Why am I, I'm paying full price for a product that doesn't, that feels like it's still in its beta mode. You know what I mean? Like it's still being beta tested? I mean, I want to say beta tested because I understand like the whole part to Soul Calibur is also their characters too. It's just that And we love them. Like they brought a, back. a huge thing to their success, I feel like, for me, is their uh create a character. Yeah, we just could have the ourselves ability in it. to all my characters that I have in my head to just put them into a video game and have them fight. That's that's a dream come true. Yeah. And shoot, if there was to be a fighting game where that's their main selling like component and they'll just they give have. you nothing but like the greatest character creation possible, I would buy that. I would buy that. I would where eat it's it up. equal on accessories and equipment for the guys and the girl characters because you get that sometimes where the girls get this outfit that looks like this and oh, it's torn. And the guys get this outfit and it's a big, badass, manly demon armor but the chick's got the torn one. And I'm just like, can I get, can I get the big, Manly badass armor, but and, like, and, for my character. And what if, as a guy, I want to wear something torn? Yeah, like if a game gave us that, something like that, throw, throw my money at you. Take my take my wallet. You can take my kids. You can have. Oh, I like to wear a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so you know, we're not trying to sit up here and complain about Soul Calibur. Like I said, we're not game developers. Yeah, we understand. Uh, we don't know budgeting. like what goes into that. Uh, like company wise, having to receive a uh, you know, a budget or whatnot. I can it's tell you, I haven't played Libra of the Soul when I found out that I can't really get that much CP from it. Like, I have to trade the in game money and I might need that for like food and stuff. So, I haven't really <laughs> played it. Um, and then just the fact that a lot of stuff isn't kind of unlockable, which you know, beforehand that was how you played the game, you went through the story mode or the arcade mode or whatever have you and oops, and you unlock stuff. Um, and if it to be different this time around, I'm not saying change is bad, change is alright. Um, but change that feels empty, it, it kind of did hurt me. And it hurt me as a creator. Because the whole point we bring up Soul Calibur is because we use, Soul, I, we use Soul Calibur as a way to bring our characters um to, to visually see our characters in whatever way we had them. And there have been a lot of times where a character that didn't have a, a 
an actual realized, like a concept art already for it, we'd make the character in game and realize, dang, that's how we want to make the character look. Yeah, that was amazing. True. That ability. So at the end of the day, like representation, diversity matters, and that's what we want to see more in Soul Calibur Six. Yeah, we're not asking and that you cater only to PLC. Hopefully, we can get that in the upcoming patches. That would be extremely dope. Um, I mean, we could be the ones, and, and I'm I want to meet others who are game developers, who want to be the ones to create uh, all ex all inclusive uh, fighting game, uh, hack and slash game, shoot, uh, shoot em up, whatever you want. Just our goal is to, to, to bring creators who feel this way, that want inclusivity, without being disappointed every time our people, we, we our other creators we give our money to, other companies that like, uh, inspired us as young children or just inspire us on the daily every time they not ignore but it does feel like they kind of ignore us at times when they kind of give you the bo 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 uh, afro and this is the only afro of ethnic the only hair of ethnic you can play with or the cornrows that look like they're glued to your head or they give you and then everything else is literally straight hair straight hair straight hair ringlets short straight hair bob straight hair it's like you start to feel a little Left out. Yeah. And so it's like, if you're like us and you feel that way about wanting to create your own, whatever it is, whatever it is, whether it be comics, because comics has this issue, but that's a topic for another time. Uh, comics have this issue, but it is, it's being talked about more. There are indie creators, there are black creators out there, and that's the important thing is that POC creators are noticing this and taking a stand to want to talk about it more. And that's something that I wanted to bring up in our next topic because we lost someone huge hmm. in the comic book community, really Stan hurt. Lee. And uh, it was and definitely hard, definitely, you know, a huge loss because he was awesome. Yeah. He was awesome. I love seeing his cameos in the Marvel films. And stuff like that. I mean, I love showing it to the kids too. I, for myself, I didn't get into Marvel comics until like later on in life. I always thought like certain heroes, like the Fantastic Four and Iron Man, was pretty cheesy. But <laughs> um, you know, I, later on, I started to appreciate like mainly the Hulk. <laughs> 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 Though I did watch, uh, you know, the the sci-fi. Well, when I watched it, it was on sci-fi. Um, the last series of the Hulk with David Banner because apparently no. Bruce Banner sounded too gay. <laughs> it's, no, it was <laughs> <laughs> no, like Wait. dead ass. That that was I read. That's the reason why they changed. Oh, I was wondering why you his were name to David Banner because the producers felt like Bruce ba Banner sounded too gay, Oops. too homo. Wow. Even even though it was the seventies, you just. Keep that in mind. Right. You know. But, um, so, you know, I mean, I'm, I can, I'll definitely be the first to say that, I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest Marvel person, especially considering that my favorite Marvel character, as far as I remember, Stan Lee didn't even like, that's the, that's the Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, did, he didn't even like that character too much. But, um, look, the, the way I look at it is like, you know, because people, every, every time a celebrity dies, people always got to talk shit, you know? It's like, there's like, well, you know, I'm not going to get into the ignorant crap people say, but I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm a comic fan. Not Marvel, not DC, not superhero. Yeah. I am a comic fan. And anyone that contributes to the survival of comic books is someone I'm on the same team with. You know, I might not have been... You know, I think I own maybe like one or two Spider-Man comic books, and that was because it was like free comic book there or some <laughs> crap. Like I, you know, most Marvel I don't read, but the fact is I love comics, and he and Jack Kirby and uh, all these other individuals, you know, contribute to that. You yeah. know, they all fought the battle for us as kids really to have did. these to have this entertainment because they knew we needed it. I mean, like so many people criticize really adults. Cute. And kids for reading comic books. And it's like, you know, I mean, ain't, you, you know, people need entertainment, plain and simple. 
You know, people need things, escapism, or even indulgence. You know, I mean, I, it's been happening for centuries where they mock the the painter or the artist or the sculptor or this person who created these beautiful architects or whatnot. And be like, ha ha ha, yeah. they'll go nowhere in life. Yeah, and that's like, why they all become elites and get billions of dollars so they could go on the spaceship and leave you on this rotten planet they're destroying. So, yeah. Man, if they leave, though, <laughs> no one else is destroying this planet. No, because we're yeah. just to be stuck with the ones that kind of like, I wish I was with them. I don't know why they don't make accent. It's, it's, I planet, mean, there's, ish, there's reasons. Yeah, so there's reasons. That is something that I've seen. And to admit, I, I kind of hated saying that. Like, people was legitimately trying to... Uh, Kanye, Stan Lee. Like, okay, I understand that you guys feel sad about Stan Lee, but can we remember Jack Kirby? And I'm like, yeah, someone like, <laughs> can we remember both of them? Yeah, yeah like, like for real. Honestly, when Stan Lee passed, I did, I, I cried. I was very sad because it's like my dad was a DC fan. Um, he was always Batman, 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 Superman, Superman, Superman. That's what he grew up with. Yeah, I would have cried too. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't grow up with DC like that. I grew up with in Marvel because my mom liked the X Men, and my mom showed me uh, further on. Hey, look, the X Men—they're mutants. They have superpowers, but they also face racial discrimination. And I was yeah. like, whoa! And it took me years later to <clears throat> figure out like how that 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 oh racial discrimination. In comparison to black people and Hispanics do in, in the world today. So it's like I grew up with Marvel a little bit more. Um, and I, Spider-Man, definitely. I, I, I even wrote a little tribute piece because it was a Sunday comics in the back of the my parents' newspaper that me and my siblings would pull and tear it and try to like read first or whatnot for Garfield and uh, Kelvin and Hobbs. Uh-huh. Um Gar- uh, Baby Blues later on too and what that one Dilbert you know but it was Amazing Spider-Man that's the one that I would cut out I would trace on paper I would trace him web slinging and like you know kicking a, uh, the rhino in the face or, or the lizard lizard man the, just the, the lizard. lizard yeah I was just yeah. there's so many iterations of a villain that's a lizard now so it's like oh god I still want to say Doc Croc because that sounds <laughs> but it's Doc Doc I know but and Killer Croc and Killer Croc I just hmm. it's just like new I, villain maybe crossover I know, right? sounds kind of cool <laughs> like I want to say Doc Croc because it sounds but, cool but you know another thing I want to point out uh, that's what I you up. know when it comes to celebrities deaths or 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 deaths or anybody I think the the thing people don't look at is you know, uh, and I'm going to go back to 2016 when David Bowie died, right? I was one of those people that really took it kind of rough. And some people really couldn't understand it. I remember one of my friends said she was crying. Her boyfriend did not understand it. And the thing about it is, you know, these people become a part of your lives. You, yeah. know, like, you may not know them personally. They may not be the best people in the world or whatever. But the fact is, in a lot of ways, you had a strong connection with them than you probably do with your own family. It's like, And you probably don't know... You know, until they pass, until something happens, that this person, like, cultivated everything that you might have been when you were younger. It, like, they planted a seed within you yeah. with the, what they were doing, with their life, with their inspiration. And when they leave, you feel that pain, and you didn't realize how much it impacted you sometimes until that moment. And not to mention, it's like, you really can't underestimate or underrate how much of a contribution things are like I have this rule like if you love a person you have to love their parents even if you don't like their parents because at the end of the day they exist because of those parents and it's the same thing with like I was saying with Stan Lee you know yeah he wasn't the original creator of Marvel but he was the figurehead he's the the person we look forward to seeing every freaking Marvel movie even if you you know we can argue about you know if you care about the Marvel movies or not that's a whole different story but the thing about it all these things he was a big contributor to things like, you know, like as I said, mentioned earlier about Black Panther. Like, my grandparents don't care about Marvel or none of that, but they do care about seeing black people get represented. If it wasn't for Marvel and Stan Lee being involved in Marvel, we wouldn't have Black Panther. <laughs> you know? Like, that idea that this creator was ridiculed, mocked, and through the times, right now, it's still hard, sort of, to be a comic book, anime, video game, just being in that geek culture. Uh, pop culture 
um, blurred culture. You know, it's still tough. We still have the parents or the adults who say, oh, uh, comic books are for kids and, you know, adults don't do this. We're still getting that ridicule. And this guy had to live through the worst parts of it when it wasn't even, like, properly paid for or appreciated. And he stood by, he persevered, and he wanted to give up, and he wanted, but it's like he didn't. And today... Like, I feel like Marvel would have been completely, bless you, Marvel you. would be completely different if Stan Lee wasn't there. You know, mm -hmm. it might still exist, but you you can't deny um, the impact that he's made. And then who knows if him being there made Marvel the, the, the I don't know what the term, the, the, the financial success that it is, the, the, the creative the success. Yeah, yeah, the giant. One of the top three you in know, the industry. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you... And, and the thing about it, like, I always think about, like, I'm not going to get too harsh on this, but Bill Maher has some things to say, like, you know, about our comic books. Do we really take comic books as seriously and whatnot? And I'm like, you know, let me point so out. Base level. Let, let, let me point out the fact that in freaking, I think a, a couple of years ago, in freaking, I, I can't remember the exact country, but in the Middle East where they're fighting ISIS, soldiers fighting ISIS. In their native country, by the way, are wearing the Punisher skull. Punisher, kind of cool. a freaking fictional character, is an inspiration to actual soldiers risking their life to fight the perceived bad guy. So, obviously, to someone who's putting their life on the line, comic books matter. Yeah, <laughs> you know? their war with this uh, terrorism that's plaguing their country to paint or draw, or in some way put this, and it's the specific skull. Like, it's not just any yep. old skull. It's the Punisher the skull. The Punisher with skull. With the long lines going down, drip. They did that. I saw that. And, you know, and I, and, I, and, and we can go on a, con you know, because Punisher's one of those controversial figures. You know, a lot of, yes, a certain type of people also idolize that character. But the fact is, <laughs> in, in in any event, you know, re regardless of your political siding or your religious beliefs the fact is we're all fans of these things you know if you take something like star wars like yeah. it's you, you know i mean i think there's a, a certain there's a certain line you can cross when you are taking something too seriously but that goes for everything that's not just with oh, fiction yeah. that's with anything there's a fine line know. between like um being a fan and obsessing yeah and, to to add to that yeah i do find it annoying when uh, people say that these things are meant for kids. And it's like, yeah, certain things are. Like, I'm not going to sit there and watch one of my uh, baby's TV shows. I can't think of one at the moment. Uh, um, let's say Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah. Okay, well, I actually watch that. Yeah, but, I mean, cool. I wouldn't watch it on my own accord. Yeah. But the, at I the end of the, the day, <laughs> cartoons, even the more adult cartoons, are made by adults. Like, all of this is made by adults. So yeah, it's like, there what no do babies you think in the studio. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What do you think Making inspired this? them to create these? And you could say, oh, well, the creators, they're not the actual creators, they're just the anime. Okay, well, there's an adult telling them to do, like, this adult had this idea for this children's show. Right. And, and the people, and the adults that write these things, and see, I guess... And this is where uh, I will say this is one reason I'm not a big fan of modern cartoons because I feel like the animation is lacking. And the reason I am have an issue with that is because growing up in the 90s, watching 90s cartoons and Dragon Ball Z, we literally learned to draw, trying to draw these characters. Yeah. You know, they were anatomically correct or somewhat anatomically correct. They you still know. looked goofy, but you there know. was a there lot of... Places. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of detail in them. There was a lot of... There was a lot that you could learn from drawing those characters, and that, and that really inspired us. As I mentioned earlier, you know, the cartoons I watched were a part of my inspiration as an artist. You know, and, and even though a lot of these cartoons... You know, most of them I don't take seriously. Most of them I don't even watch anymore. But the <laughs> fact is... That was a contributing factor in my life, even in small doses. And those small doses matter just as much as the, the, the bigger, you know. It's like a subject I definitely want to bring up next time will be cartoons and TV series because those were a huge contributing factor. And let's face it, people who are watching the 90s shows like us, they went on and they created amazing cartoons today. I can name mm -hmm. so many that are actually good now that, yeah, they don't look the same as the old cartoons, but we had so many more cartoons coming out then that you were just, there was like Ed, Ed and Eddie just 
crazy wacky styles pop of girls is like with their no fingers stuff and then there was oh, yeah. the the more like detailed um the detailed cartoons that came out then and just the wacky silly stuff it's like there's so many inspirations that those adults created that inspired children us that we later on and decided we wanted to contribute to so you can't just knock um all oh, comic books are for kids and then like, turn around and be like, oh, you know, I stopped reading comic books when I was a kid, so you need to say, stop. I want to say that's an issue. That's an issue with uh, people having that disconnect to their inner child. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you are an adult, that you have to be into anime, that you have to no, be into cartoons or whatnot. But it's important for you to be with that, in touch with that inner child, that inner creativity. Uh, one of the things that I believe is that we were put here on this earth to create, to to c- come up, to imagine things, and to create those things that we imagine. And I think it's very important that we do that always as creators because I think everyone has the ability to create in some shape or form. You don't have to draw. You don't have to write. You know, there's there's so many things that you can do. Oh, yeah. Um, but we're kind of running out of time. Are we? And I wanted to uh, <laughs> to talk to M... I'm uh, sorry. wanted to talk to artist MDC a little bit about the film he just completed, Remember the 31st. Yeah, plug that. Yep. Plug it. Um... <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What was your inspirations behind that uh, specific short? Okay, so remember the thirty first is basically a story about um, this town called Waycom, of which on October the thirty first they celebrate Halloween a bit differently. You know, there's not there's trick or treating, but there's more to it than that. You know. And the new resident, Mia, is about to learn this the hard way, you know. (laughs) So the inspiration behind the story, originally it started years ago where every Halloween I grew this tradition where I would uh, draw pastel artwork for Halloween. And I eventually came across a theme, and and I just called it the grotesque pumpkin patch. And I, and, uh, I realized, I'm like, Huh, grotesque pumpkin patch. You know, it's pumpkin patch where, where, uh, well, it's a pumpkin patch and it's grotesque. They're mm-hmm. like these. <laughs> they're fleshy on yeah, the they're side. fleshy. Self-explanatory. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I didn't. First and foremost, the the villain in the story, Eli Monroe, is actually an evolved. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Evolved co-identity I created, you know, I, you know, usually come up with these other personas, and this was my Halloween persona, and I decided to go ahead and make him an actual character, um, so, uh, really in my mind, down the line, I want to make a feature of this, but I decided, you know, I hadn't filmed nothing in, like, three years, or nothing that I really, really care to be represented by in three <laughs> in three years and, and when i say that i mean i'm not saying that i mean I, I did a music video and that was great but you know that was a paid gig and it was something to keep me busy so you know it but can I ask why um why did it take three years for you oh what was the purpose of the three-year break i mean not to get into anything personal if it, if it is personal just put my business out there but no um <laughs> I mean, not only only the fact that uh you know I had picked up a new job and that just took a lot of my time and and the the film I think there was another film I was really focused on doing which was just a lot harder to do a lot more difficult to do and it just kept getting put off and put off and put off so you know and really when I came up with this remember the thirty first it was actually a lot shorter. And I tried to really p- try and pull this off in one night and and do it real simple, like literally by myself, and that didn't work out. Thankfully, actually, because it would have been a disaster. But literally, with it, when the next year rolled around, I got to know more people. I I um really 
um, nailed down a few working relationships and I realized, you know, I could do this. This would be something really simple because, again, I was still thinking about this other short, but I'm like, you know, this will be a lot easier to do. And the fact is, I just need to put product out there. You know, the point is to get back in the practice and get busy so that when you come to the tougher jobs, they'll be a lot easier to do and you'll have more support doing them. You know, so. Okay. So, that's uh, actually, that's actually something that a lot of creatives deal with, especially in our time and age. Like, you, I remember telling my uh, parents I wanted to be a cartoonist that I um, that I wanted to I wanted to write I wanted to write comic books and stuff and for the most part they were like yeah okay that's cool but you need a job you need to start making money and I did <laughs> that's what I did I, I got a job I started making money um do I necessarily agree with what they told me? Uh, let's just say I would have it be different with my kids and tell them to to follow their dreams. But in a way that would actually have them. Like you can tell someone to follow your dreams and they can just still BS. Like if there's no... In, I feel like if there's no intent, then... You're just going to kind of be aimless. Like, you got to know what you want out of life to get it. And... Yeah, because every creative needs a little structure as well. Yeah. Every person, to be honest. And I, I feel like... Well, I, uh, to to snowball into my next question. When did the, did the... You said that your job got in the way of you filming. Um... What kept your what kept that from being your reason? Like after three years doing the job, what made you get back into filming? Well, that, well that's the thing. One thing I, I don't want to say is that when when I, okay now l- let me clarify the job didn't get in my way per se because here, here's the thing there's always going to be something in your life that's going to you know. That's kind of going to sway your way, so to speak, you know. Um, when I got the job, I mean, I got the job because I needed it. You know, it was there was bills to be paid, and frankly, I needed my own film equipment. I'm like, you know, I'm going to do this with my own hands. I'm tired of depending on people, so I need to get money to get equipment. And really, I worked a job like I did, I, you know, so that... um. So that there will be no problem with me getting what I needed. I think when I first got to however much money I got, I got my camera and some lenses. I started buying lights. I started buying light stands. And I literally worked this job to benefit my career. You know, so it wasn't, so, you know, it wasn't a case where my job completely, I wasn't in prison. You know, it, it didn't take me away from my life. It contributed to my life. But I had to stay focused because, you know, when you do that, it's very easy to get distracted and get comfortable, you know, because you know you know your job's giving you money. You know, you're you're still mostly working on your your career for free, but you know your job's making money. So if you, you know, it's really easy for you to quit one or the other. But I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I actually risked my job for this darn movie. Like I, <laughs> I literally almost got fired because of this film. So clearly, I was definitely focus on my career more than this job but at the same time i wouldn't have so you're saying you would have chose the you would have chose you completing remember the 31st over your job yes though you weren't getting any money from this yes i would have however i what i will say i wouldn't have done that probably uh three years ago um i had to get to a certain point at my job where i was where i had enough you know, financial back, and I knew I could be unemployed for a while, and that I had enough going on where, you know, I could probably, you know, I could, I've gotten paid for film and photography 
and art since I've gotten this job. So I knew I had, I had things to fall back on at this point. So, the, you know, there, it wasn't that same anxiety. Because when I first got this job, I didn't even have electricity in the house. So I absolutely needed, like, money immediately, like, years ago. But where I was, well, where I am now, it's not so much the case. Trust me, I wasn't. I wasn't throwing the job in the trash. I still need this job, but what? But when it when it really came down to choosing, I'm like, at the end of the day, this is in fact more important because this is my life. Because I could skip today. I could I could say screw this film, go on to work the next day, and still get fired and not have a film. But I knew if I had this film, regardless, I have something to rely on. You know, especially considering that. I had a festival to show this film to, <laughs> you know. And that's pretty amazing itself, too. Yeah, and um, so there there was a lot of things, and and uh, you know there was a you know I have a really good actress in this film. I had two good actresses in this film, actually. One of which is a a model. You know, I had you know I really I couldn't I couldn't give up because there were so many other people that had worked very hard and were really looking forward to this film giving up would have just been insulting you know no one if i quit my job no one's gonna care <laughs> mm-hmm. you know but if i quit this movie everyone's gonna care and i might screw myself doing so you know so yeah because yeah. uh, a bunch of this was pretty much uh pro bono right the the people that helped you yeah that's and that's cool. a very important subject though that you bring up about the fact that we as creators, we still need a way to ground ourselves. We still need a way to finance ourselves. I mean, if if it was possible, I'm pretty sure every single one of us would be like, if someone came up to us and said, hey, I want to pay you to draw or to create, I don't want anything else from you. Just just create, and I'm just going to give you like a 1000 a week. And I would have been like, mm, you don't want anything from me. I just want to see your beautiful whatever it is. You know, and... and yeah, yeah, I would do it. Totally and, 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 and listen, I mean, now, and, and to expand on... Uh, what Aronson said, you know, about, you know, to follow your dreams or to get a job. I think that really depends on you. It just really depends on what's going to benefit you better in that moment. I think you as a creative, <laughs> if you, if you, well, as a creative, I feel like if you work a job, that job should be going to your career. You know, that's how I look at it. That's mm-hmm. why I am working this job. And yeah, I'm paying bills too, but... A certain percentage of that money goes to, like I say, equipment, money for events, money for the lift to take me places. And if you are just going to, you know, follow your dreams and do and not take a job, then you better put everything you have in your spirit yeah. to make sure you get it done. Definitely. You know, like in, in that sense, yeah. like I said, you have to have a tent and you can't half ass it and whatnot. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having a job. I'm pretty I sure have a job. Us, I do yeah. security. But. With my job, I make sure that I put a certain percentage towards writing, you know, and in hopes that my writing gets out there and yet yeah, hopefully it will make me money so I can do more and more writing and less and less of my job because that's where the disconnect to my true north comes in with that job. That job isn't something that I want to continually do for the rest of my life i like that terminology hey what's true north mean <sighs> i mean uh being yourself like, being being true to yourself where you know for a fact that the path that you're on that you can feel that it's in alignment think of it like a video game like you well well, I get, yeah, like the wake on icon on the map. Yeah, pretty much. Like I remember, That's the mission. Exactly. All you other are side you follow the aerial at the top of the screen. As a person who gets lost with yeah. side quests, yeah, you know, I definitely like you know having that wake on point there was always important, and we need that in our everyday life to have that true north, that wake on point, that uh, or waypoint. I think it's the, the term actually. The waypoint that lets you know this is, and to reestablish it every day. This is. Why I'm doing this? This is why I'm going to this job that I don't like. This is why I'm um, waking up early in the morning. Oh gosh, to babysit. Uh. Yeah, you don't. Here's the thing about it: screw motivation. You need purpose. Like, what is your purpose for doing what you're doing? I like motivation. That's 
Well, well, see, motivation is a given. I mean, and, but and the thing about it, even when you're not motivated, you have to keep That's true. going about it. Because like there's going to be so many more days starting out when you're not motivated. Exactly. Like, you have that initial excitement, and then you see it going because life just going to come, and it's going to get in your way and whatnot. Like, it's there's just, so many days where it's like, like, I had this plan where it's like, make the comic book. Get it crowdfunded. Uh, get it printed. Send it out. You know, repeat or whatever. Easy peasy. You know, you see that so many <laughs> times on Kickstarter and right and whatnot. And then like I'll be writing my story, and then a thought just comes up in my head like, how is this supposed to make you money again? <laughs> like I mean, yes, the whole thing isn't about money. It's about you know doing what's fulfilling to you, but at the same time. Um, it has to be getting paid for it allows for us to do so much more as well. Yeah. It, it's basically a marriage, you know. You know, you have the, the what they call the the honeymoon, uh, the honeymoon phase. Yeah, you had the honeymoon phase. Then you know, as the marriage goes on, you know, you get to you get to keep the spark in the marriage. Like, why did you marry this person? That's what you <laughs> had to remember. You know, I, I know y'all can relate. You know, <laughs> it's like that's what it comes down to. You're married wow. to your passion. You, you what's going to keep the spark at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And you're just going to be downtown. But that's the whole point of having purpose. It's like you need to have. This is the reason or reasons. I'm yeah, doing this. One. It could be multiple. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, just doing this, it. That, this, this. And it has to be a real, like I say, that's why I say. It's got to be a fulfilling purpose, one. Purpose, you know. One. Exactly, you know. That's more important. Because doing things for other people, that's great. But it's like, are you doing it because it makes you feel good to help others? Or are you doing it because uh, that other person is making you feel bad for not doing it? You know, yeah. Yeah. there are situations like, where you're like, oh, if I don't take just... care of them, they're going to be miserable. But are you taking care of them because you care about them generally, or you just don't want their misery to reflect on you, for you to be the cause of that misery? Mm -hmm. yeah. Your wants have to be self-fulfilling. Your creation, your creating has to be self-fulfilling. You have to want to do this because it's generally, for whatever reasons, as many as you have, in the end of it, you're the, the focus of that reason. And as creatives, we kind of get lost in the, the hows and the whys, especially in the whys. Because let me tell you, that uh, my recent film, Good Lord, like especially in that last <laughs> week editing, it had so. It see originally it was supposed to be released on the twenty seventh, a few days before Halloween. It ended up getting released on Halloween, just barely. I had to call out of work immediately, hence almost getting fired, because I had already taken like two, actually a total of like three days, and coming in late because I had picked up a second job. It was crazy. And so many times, it really, I was like, God, I should, you know, I really deep down wanted to give up. I was losing sleep. I was getting frustrated. There was some things I couldn't fix. It seemed like there was always some sort of darn problem. I had to, I literally uploaded that darn video on, on uh, YouTube three different times because the first two times, it just was a bad copy. It's like the, the first one that uploaded the, the lighting, the, uh, the, the color correction was off because the laptop was off, so I had to go back and redo it again. Oh. And anyone who has ever rendered anything knowing that is hell. It takes forever. Um, Thank goodness I don't know. <laughs> then I, yeah, yeah, then I did a, I re-uploaded it a second time, not realizing I re-uploaded the first video again. Dang. So I had to do it. Again, like literally minutes before my second job, it got on YouTube, and now I gotta say, boy, that I I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to do my job that night, and it would have sucked because I worked at a haunted house, and this was Halloween night, so it would have been pretty bad to not show up on Halloween night unannounced. I was <laughs> I was, I literally risked risked both my jobs that day to get this film out there, and so yeah, it. it How do you feel about it now? I feel pretty darn good. I mean, as an artist, I'm going to be hard on myself. There's things I wish I did better and whatnot. But, yeah, you live and That's learn. common. You know. <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, I think on one of the YouTube comments for the video, someone was said they, uh, they felt like the guy in the beginning that was in the back, that he should have had more screen time. 
Oh, 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 oh really? <laughs> was that, yeah, was that yeah. the case? I, I don't remember that comment, Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably see it. Yeah, I definitely uh, suggest anyone who's listening and yeah, so, still here. Hey, check it out. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Uh, it's a passion them, project. Where, where can they find you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really, if you if you just look up Remember the 31st on YouTube, it usually comes up. But if not, the uh, page is called Crossroad Entertainment. Oh, gosh. Spell entertainment real quick. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll put it in the description. You know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, e- even though I'm still working that out, but yeah. <laughs> but if you look up, remember the thirty first. It it usually it should be the first thing to come up. I it, think we can any, link uh, it. Social media, any other social media people can find you on. Uh, IG as artist underscore MDC. Um, uh, art is up there. My photography's up there. Any film updates? It pretty much any and all things I do. Warning: eighteen plus. But I mean, it's oh, like yeah. a soft warning. Not safe for work. It's not. Yeah, a, that's it, what it is. It's not that's a soft a, warning. A it's okay. Warning. Yeah. It's there, not a there's warning. really big, big uh, things on there. <laughs> really big things. I didn't want to make the joke. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was nice. We're immensely happy. That you were like w- one thing. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know if uh, artist MDC said. You know, he's a director, and he definitely helped us with this first episode, directing us on how to get through it. Because, I mean, even with this, like we decided that we wanted to do it, and as the time started to click, I, I didn't want to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I sat here. Be real serious with you. Like, I'm like, man, what what do I say? And then, like, you know, before we know it, it's like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, 45 minutes. You know, we're still talking. And, you know, hopefully it all sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Also, like, audio quality-wise. Maybe the I'm same just, time y'all find I'm out. just eyeing, and I'm like, okay, okay, we need to talk a little bit louder. Yeah, we, we are recording, right? What is that noise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's hey. fun. I think the whole part about this that's like amazing is that we're able to sit here as as just humans, as creators, and you know, just have this ability to talk about things, to express ourselves and what's been on our mind lately. And uh, if you guys like it, I mean, hopefully we'll come back again with another um, episode. I yeah, mean, even if you, off the top even of our head, episode. Don't, you know, we still will. Yeah, it'll be here. You know, <laughs> yeah. come someone, back and be like, hey, someone must like it. Like you know. Uh, hint, hint, MDC siblings, said, hint. you know, at least two people. <laughs> Mom, Dad, if you out there, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at you, siblings. <laughs> I think I bashed you guys earlier. But, um, I don't think they're still here. I think, <laughs> they, yeah. I think they booked it. You know. Probably like commented, this is trash. I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me, bro. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, but, you send your brother. <laughs> but look, here's your inspirational quote today. If SoundCloud rappers can make it, so can literally anything else. Yeah. That's <laughs> Damn. But you know, some uh, they're pretty good though. Like, oh, well, what about what about what about you? What what words of encouragement do you want to end this out with? Okay, um, represent, represent, diversify, unify. That's I'm working with it. I'm working with it. But that's that's what I want to embody. That's what I want my art to embody. Hey, I'm gonna plug now. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And Tumblr. Okay, this is your show. Why do yeah. you feel the need to plug? Because he got like, to plug. I wanted to, be, to do it. Yeah, because he's a guest. We might not invite him. Like what? 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 Like it will be. Like, can, <laughs> what? You, can you imagine that? Like with the uh, um, the gladiators. I'm gonna do it. And whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> like we'll have people be like, "All right, what's the verdict? <laughs> does he stay or does he go? Like, does he go on to the next show? Do we need to look for someone else?" We need to put in that oh, one. We the want lines. new hosts. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, all right. So look here. <laughs> you can't replace us. <laughs> Call artist, artist wife, writer husband. How how you gonna find something perfect like that? Like, uh, I yeah. mean, it look man, it is 2018. If I want to marry a wall, I will. Yeah, you can do that. I don't know if he should like. You know what, though? You do you. If you want to marry Wall, call it uh, well, artist, yeah. husband, and Wall. And yeah. Wall. Like, imagine yeah, the, comment, the, 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 the commentating from the Wall. Yeah, but you're pretty sure that he'll be like, uh, no, artist, 
model, director, writer, <laughs> husband, filmmaker. <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh, husband and wall. Husband and wall. Yeah. <laughs> Don't dun, 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 me. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just want to end it out on. Um, like positive seriously, note. don't don't give up. Like, even if you have a job, like, still still do it. Like you know, like still work towards your dream. Don't let a job stop you from wanting to accomplish your dreams. Like you know, you don't have to quit that job. You know, <laughs> but just just have that intent and purpose to work more and more towards your craft. And yeah. With that, we'll see you next episode. All right, people. Peace. Peace. Thanks, Jamal. Yay.